Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know about multiplying fractions. We will go through how to multiply fractions by fractions, whole numbers by fractions, mixed numbers, improper fractions, how to cross cancel, and we will go through a bunch of examples. Everything is time stamped and put into chapters, so feel free to jump around. Check the description for the list of chapters and timestamps. Let's start by taking a look at multiplying fractions by fractions. Now simply put, all we need to do is multiply straight across. So multiply the numerators, the top numbers, and then multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers. Once we multiply, we can simplify if possible. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have seven ninths times two thirds. Let's multiply straight across, starting with the numerators. So the top numbers, seven times two is 14. Now multiply the denominators. Nine times three is 27. We end up with 14 27ths, which is in simplest form. The only common factor between 14 and 27 is 1. So again, this is in simplest form. Final answer, 14 27ths. Let's move on to number 2, where we have 6 eighths times 3 fifths. Let's multiply straight across, starting with the numerators. We have 6 times 3. That gives us 18. Now for the denominators, we have eight times five. That gives us 40. So we end up with 18 fortieths. Now 18 fortieths can be simplified. The greatest common factor between 18 and 40 is two. So let's divide both of these by two in order to simplify. 18 divided by two, is nine and 40 divided by two is 20. So we get a final simplified answer of nine twentieths. The only common factor between nine and 20 is one. So we are in simplest form. The final simplified answer, nine twentieths. There's how to multiply a fraction by a fraction. Let's move on to multiplying whole numbers by fractions. Now we will take a look at how to multiply a whole number by a fraction. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have seven times two thirds. Now remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So multiply the numerators, the top numbers, and then multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers. Since we have a whole number within this problem, seven, we need to write that whole number in fractional form. That way we have a numerator and a denominator and we can multiply straight across. So let's write seven in fractional form. Now, in order to write a whole number in fractional form, all we need to do is put it over one. We're not changing the value of that whole number. We are just, again, putting it in fractional form. So we're not changing the value of this problem at all. Seven over one still has a value of seven. Then we have times two thirds. Now we can multiply straight across. Let's start with the numerators. So the top numbers, seven times two is 14. Now for the denominators, the bottom numbers, one times three is three. So we get 14 over three, 14 thirds. Now that is our answer, but it is an improper fraction. So let's convert it to a mixed number. We do that by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So 14 divided by three. How many whole groups of three in 14? Well, four. That's the whole number part of our mixed number. Now we don't hit 14 exactly. Four whole groups of three gets us to 12. So we have a remainder of two. That remainder is the numerator of the fractional part of the mixed number. And then we keep the denominator of three the same. Always look to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. Two thirds is in simplest form. The only common factor between two and three is one. 
So we are done. Final answer, four and two thirds. Now, just as a quick recap, as far as how we went from 14 thirds, 14 over three, that improper fraction to the mixed number. Again, we divided the numerator, so 14, and we divided by the denominator, three. So 14 divided by three. How many whole groups of three in 14? Well, four whole groups. That's the whole number portion of our mixed number. Four times three is 12. Subtract 14 minus 12 gives us two. So a remainder of two. That's the numerator of our fractional part of the mixed number. And then we keep the denominator of three the same. So four and two thirds. Let's move on to number two, where we have 12 times 5 sixths. So let's rewrite 12 in fractional form by putting it over one times 5 sixths. Now we can multiply straight across. Let's start with the numerators. 12 times 5 is 60. Now for the denominators. 1 times 6 is 6. So we get 60 sixths or 60 over 6 and that's our answer but it's an improper fraction so let's convert it to a mixed number let's divide the numerator 60 by the denominator 6 so 60 divided by 6 how many whole groups of 6 in 60 well 10 that hits 60 exactly we don't have a remainder so this is our final answer we get a whole number answer. Again, we don't have a remainder there, so our answer is just 10. There's how to multiply a whole number by a fraction. Let's move on to multiplying mixed numbers. Now we will take a look at how to multiply a mixed number by a mixed number. We will go through two examples. Let's jump into number one, where we have six and one fourth times one and two thirds. Now remember, when we have a multiplication problem that involves fractions, we can multiply straight across. So we multiply the numerators, the top numbers, and then we multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers. So our first step here is to convert the mixed numbers to improper fractions. That way we just have numerators and denominators and we can multiply straight across. So let's start by converting six and one fourth to an improper fraction. We do that by starting at the bottom and working our way to the top. We multiply and then add. So we multiply the denominator by the whole number and then add the numerator. So four times six is 24 plus one is 25. That's the numerator of the improper fraction. Then we keep the denominator the same. So that is four times, and then we can convert one and two thirds to an improper fraction. So multiply and then add. Three times one is three plus two is five. Keep the denominator of three the same. Now we just have numerators and denominators and we can multiply straight across. Let's start with the numerators. So 25 times 5. That gives us 125. Now for the denominators. 4 times 3. That gives us 12. So we end up with 125 over 12, or 125 twelfths, which is our answer, but it's an improper fraction. So let's convert it to a mixed number. We do that by dividing the numerator, 125, by the denominator, 12. So 125 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 125? Well, 10. And that's the whole number of our mixed number. That gets us to 120. So we have a remainder of 5. We don't hit 125 exactly. That remainder of 5 is the numerator of the fractional part of the mixed number. And then we keep the denominator of 12 the same. 
and we get 10 and 5 twelfths. We can look to see if we can simplify the fractional part of this mixed number. 5 twelfths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 5 and 12 is 1. So we are done. 10 and 5 twelfths. Now, just for a quick recap, I'm going to write out how we went from that improper fraction of 125 twelfths to the mixed number of 10 and 5 twelfths. Again, we divide the numerator, so 125, by the denominator, 12. So 125 divided by 12. We can start with 12 divided by 12, which is 1. Multiply 1 times 12 is 12, subtract, 12 minus 12 is zero, and then bring down. Now we repeat, so go back to divide. So we have five divided by 12, which we can't do that, so we need a zero here. Zero times 12 is zero, subtract, five minus zero is five. So 10, remainder five. 10 is the whole number of our mixed number. The remainder of five, is the numerator, and then we keep the denominator of 12 the same. So again, our final answer, 10 and 5 twelfths. Let's move on to number two. For number two, we have eight and one half times three and seven eighths. Let's start by converting these mixed numbers to improper fractions. We will do eight and one half first. So two times eight is 16 plus one is 17 over two. So 17 halves times now four, three and seven eighths. So multiply and then add eight times three is 24 plus seven is 31. And then we keep the denominator of eight the same. Now we can multiply straight across, and we will start with the numerators. So 17 times 31. For number two, this is going to take a little more work than number one. I'm not sure what 17 times 31 is, so I'm going to go to the side and write this out and multiply. So let's do 31. I'll put the larger number in value on top times 17. Seven times one is seven, seven times three, is 21. Now we need a zero, and then we have one times one is one, and then one times three is three. Add seven plus zero is seven, one plus one is two, and then two plus three is five. So we get 527 for the numerator, and then as far as the denominators, we have two times eight, which is 16. So we end up with 527 over 16, or 527 sixteenths. That is our answer, but it's an improper fraction. So let's convert it to a mixed number by dividing the numerator, 527, by the denominator, 16. Now, I'm not sure what that answer is, so again, I'm going to come off to the side and work through that. So 527, divided by 16. So we will start with 52 divided by 16. How many whole groups of 16 in 52? Well, three, that gets us to 48. Multiply three times 16 is 48. 52 minus 48 is four. Bring down the seven, and now we repeat. So we divide, we have 47 divided by 16. How many whole groups of 16 in 47? Well, two, that gets us to 32. And now we can multiply, two times 16 is 32, subtract, and we get 15. So 32, remainder 15, that means 32 whole groups of 16 in 527. So that's the whole number of our mixed number. And then we have a remainder of 15. So that's the numerator of the fractional part. And then we keep the denominator of 16 the same. 
So we get 13 and 15 sixteenths. We can check to see if we can simplify the fractional part of the mixed number. 15 sixteenths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 15 and 16 is one. So we are done. Final answer, 32 and 15 sixteenths. So there you have it. There's how to multiply a mixed number by a mixed number. Let's move on to multiplying a mixed number by a whole number. Now we will take a look at multiplying a mixed number by a whole number. Let's jump into our example where we have 5 and 5 sixths times 3. Now the first thing that we want to do, we want to convert our mixed number to an improper fraction and then write our whole number as an improper fraction. Let's start with the mixed number and we start at the bottom and work our way up. So we multiply and then add. So we do our denominator times the whole number. So six times five, which is 30, plus the numerator of five. So 30 plus five is 35. That's the numerator of our improper fraction. We keep the denominator of six the same. So we get 35 over six. Now that improper fraction is equivalent to the mixed number. We just converted it to an improper fraction. So we're not changing the value of the problem at all. Now we need to write our three as a fraction. So put it into fractional form. And all we need to do to put a whole number in fractional form is put it over one. We want an improper fraction and the whole number to be in fractional form. So all we have is a top and a bottom. That way we can multiply straight across. So once we're at this point, we can multiply straight across. So numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. Let's start with the numerators. So 35 times three, 35 times three gives us 105. As far as our denominators, we have six times one, which is six. So our answer as an improper fraction is 105 sixths or 105 over six. Now let's convert that to a mixed number. And we do that by dividing our numerator by the denominator. So 105 divided by six. I'm going to come to the side here to work through that. So we have 105 divided by six. The first thing we need to do, we need to find out how many whole groups of six are in 105. That's going to be the whole number part of our mixed number. So let's start with 10 divided by six. How many whole groups of six out of 10? Well, one, one times six is six. Subtract, 10 minus six is four. Bring down our five. So we have 45 divided by six now. How many whole groups of six out of 45? Well, that's going to be seven. That gets us to 42. So seven times six is 42. Subtract, and we get a remainder of three. So we do not hit 105 exactly. We have something left over, that remainder three. So 17 whole groups of six out of 105. That's going to be our whole number portion of the mixed number. Now we had a remainder of three. That's going to be the numerator of the fractional part of our mixed number. And then we keep our denominator of six the same. So we get 17 and three sixths. Always check to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. And in this case, we can. We have a common factor of three between three and six. So let's divide both of these by three in order to simplify. And we get 17, three divided by three is one, and then six divided by three is two. So we get 17 and a half for our final simplified answer. There's how to multiply a mixed number by a whole number. Let's move on to multiplying a mixed number by a fraction. 
Now we will take a look at multiplying a mixed number by a fraction. Let's jump into our example where we have 4 and 1 fourth times 3 fifths. Now the first thing that we need to do, we need to convert that mixed number to an improper fraction. That way we just have a numerator and a denominator, a top and a bottom. So we do that by multiplying and then adding. We start at the bottom and work our way to the top. So we multiply, then add. So our denominator times the whole number. 4 times 4 is 16, and then we add the numerator. So 1, 16 plus 1 gives us 17. That's the numerator of our improper fraction. And then we keep the denominator of 4 the same. Bring down our multiplication sign and then our fraction. At this point, we are ready to multiply. And we multiply straight across when we multiply fractions. So the numerator times numerator and then denominator times denominator. Let's start with the numerators, the top numbers. So 17 times 3. That gives us 51. Our denominators, the bottom numbers, we have 4 times 5, which gives us 20. So we get to 51 twentieths, and that's our final answer as an improper fraction. Now we can convert that to a mixed number. We do that by dividing. We divide our numerator, 51, by our denominator, 20. So we need to think, how many whole groups of 20 can we pull out of 51? Well, 2. That gets us to 40. Now, we do not hit 51 exactly. We have something left over, a remainder. So if we pull two whole groups of 20 out of 51, that's pulling 40 out of 51. So we have a remainder of 11. That's the numerator of our mixed number. And we keep our denominator of 20 the same. So to recap, I'm going to write this out off to the side. We did 51 divided by 20. So how many whole groups of 20 out of 51? Well, 2. That's the whole number part of our mixed number. 2 times 20 is 40. So let's subtract to get our remainder. 51 minus 40 is 11. So we get 2 remainder 11. That remainder of 11 is the numerator, part of the fractional part of the mixed number, and then we keep our denominator of 20 the same. Always check to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. 11 twentieths is in simplest form. The only common factor between 11 and 20 is 1. So we are done. 4 and 1 fourth times 3 fifths equals 2 and 11 twentieths. There's how to multiply a mixed number by a fraction. Let's move on to how to use cancellation when multiplying fractions. Now we will take a look at using cancellation, also called cross cancellation, when multiplying two fractions. Cancellation is a way to simplify a problem before we multiply. Now remember, when we multiply fractions, we multiply straight across. So multiply the numerators, the top numbers, and then multiply the denominators, the bottom numbers. We use cancellation before we multiply straight across. This strategy gives us smaller numbers in value to work with and easier numbers to work with. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number 1, where we have 7 tenths times 5 sixths. When we use cancellation, again, we need to look to simplify the problem before we multiply. Look for common factors other than 1 diagonally. That way we can divide those numbers by that common factor in order to simplify the problem before multiplying. Think of it like simplifying fractions, but we are looking diagonally. So let's look at 7 and 6 first. Are there any common factors between 7 and 6 other than 1? No, the only common factor is 1, so we can't use cancellation with the 7 and the 6. Now let's take a look at the 10 and the 5. Are there any common factors other than 1 between 10 and 5? 
Yes, five is a common factor, and it happens to be the greatest common factor. So let's divide 10 and five by five. So 10 divided by five gives us two. Five divided by five gives us one. Now we have a simpler problem. We have smaller numbers in value to work with. So let's multiply straight across now, starting with the numerators. Seven times one is seven. Now for the denominators, two times six gives us 12. Seven twelfths is our final answer, and it is in simplest form. The only common factor between seven and 12 is one. So we are done, seven twelfths. Now let's go through that problem without using cancellation in order to see the difference. So we have seven tenths times five sixths. So let's multiply straight across again without using cancellation. We will start with the numerators. So seven times five is 35. Now for the denominators, 10 times six is 60. So we get 35 sixtieths, which is different than when we used cancellation. Well, 35 sixtieths isn't in simplest form, so let's simplify. Are there any common factors between 35 and 60 other than one? Yes, five, and five is the greatest common factor. So let's divide 35 and 60 by five in order to simplify. 35 divided by five is seven. 60 divided by five is 12. So our final simplified answer, seven twelfths. The only common factor between seven and 12 is one, so that is in simplest form and we are done. So we get seven twelfths that way as well. So do we have to use cancellation in order to multiply fractions? No, but it is a good strategy to be familiar with and use when possible. It can be helpful. Let's move on to number two, where we have 15 20 seconds times 11 twelfths. Let's look to use cancellation. And again, we look diagonally. So let's take a look at 15 and 12 First, do we have any common factors other than one? Yes, three is a common factor and the greatest common factor. So let's divide them both by three. 15 divided by three is five. 12 divided by three is four. Now let's take a look at 22 and 11. Are there any common factors other than one between 22 and 11? Yes, 11, and 11 is the greatest common factor. So let's divide 22 by 11. That gives us two. And then 11 divided by 11, that gives us one. Now we can multiply straight across, and you can see that we have much simpler and easier numbers to work with when we multiply straight across. So let's start with the numerators. Five times one gives us five. Now for the denominators, two times four gives us eight. So we get five eighths. The only common factor between five and eight is one. So we are in simplest form and we are done. For number two, that problem was much simpler to work through after we used cancellation. We had five times one and two times four instead of 15 times 11 and 22 times 12. Now, did we have to use cancellation? No, we could have gone straight across and done 15 times 11 and then 22 times 12 and then simplified. But the cancellation made it easier and simpler as far as multiplying straight across. So understanding cancellation and how to use it can be helpful when multiplying fractions. There's how to use cancellation when multiplying two fractions. Let's move on to using cancellation when multiplying mixed numbers. Now we will take a look at using cancellation when multiplying mixed numbers. Let's jump into our example where we have 10 and 1 eighth times 4 and 4 ninths. Now the first thing that we need to do, we need to convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. 
That way we just have a numerator and a denominator. We'll start with 10 and 1 8. So let's go from the bottom and work our way to the top. So we multiply and then add. We do our denominator times the whole number. So 8 times 10, which is 80, plus our numerator, which is 1. So 80 plus 1 is 81. That's our numerator of the improper fraction. We keep our denominator of 8 the same. We'll bring our multiplication sign down and then convert our second mixed number. Start at the bottom, we multiply, and then add. So 9 times 4 is 36, plus 4 is 40. So that's our numerator, and we keep our denominator of 9 the same. So we have 81 eighths times 40 ninths. 81 eighths is equivalent to 10 and 1 eighth. It's just in the form of an improper fraction, and then 10 and 1 eighth is in the form of a mixed number. Both of those are equivalent. So when we convert to an improper fraction, we're not changing the value of anything. And then 40 ninths is equivalent to 4 and 4 ninths. Again, we did this, so we just have a numerator and a denominator, and we are able to multiply. At this point, we can multiply straight across. So we can do 81 times 40, and then 8 times 9, but we can use cross cancellation, and this is a way to simplify fractions before multiplying. It gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with, therefore a simpler problem to solve. We cross cancel by looking for common factors between the numerators and denominators, so the top and bottom. Think of it as simplifying fractions, but we can look diagonally as well. For example, we have 81 and 9. So 81 right here and 9 diagonally. We can look for common factors there. A common factor between 81 and 9 is 9. So what we can do, we can divide both of those by 9. So let's cross them out and divide them both by 9. 81 divided by 9 is 9, and then 9 divided by 9 is 1. So you can see that gave us some smaller numbers in value and easier numbers to work with. We can also look the other way diagonally. So between 8 and 40, do we have any common factors? Yes, the greatest common factor between 8 and 40 is 8. So let's divide them both by 8. So 8 divided by 8, let's cross it out. That's going to give us 1. And then 40 divided by 8 is 5. Once we get to this point, we can multiply straight across. 9 times 5 is 45. And then 1 times 1 is 1. Now 45 over 1, that equals 45. So let's write our answer as a whole number instead of leaving it as an improper fraction. So our final answer... 45. Now, if we did not use cross cancellation, we would have to multiply 81 times 40 and then 8 times 9 and then simplify from there, and eventually we're going to get the same answer. So, cross cancellation is a useful tool when we have multiplication problems that involve fractions. Again, it gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with, therefore, a simpler problem to solve. Think of it as simplifying the problem before multiplying. Now, can we use cross cancellation for every single multiplication problem that involves fractions? No, we have to have common factors other than one between our numerators and denominators. If the only common factor we have is one between our numerators and denominators, we can't use cross cancellation. So something to keep in mind. So there's how to use cancellation when multiplying mixed numbers. Let's move on to multiplying improper fractions. Now we will take a look at how to multiply improper fractions. So how to work through a multiplication problem involving one or more improper fractions. Now we go through any problem involving improper fractions the same way we do with proper fractions. Multiply straight across, so numerator times numerator, the top numbers, and then denominator times denominator, the bottom numbers, 
and then simplify if possible. Improper fractions just have a value greater than one whole. If we're given a problem involving any improper fractions, that doesn't change the way we multiply. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have eight thirds times one fourth. Let's multiply straight across, starting with the numerators. We have eight times one, so straight across here, eight times one is eight. Now for the denominators. So three times four is 12. We end up with eight twelfths, which is correct, but we can simplify. The greatest common factor between eight and 12 is four. Let's divide eight and 12 by four. So eight divided by four and 12 divided by four. Eight divided by four is two. 12 divided by four is three. Two thirds is in simplest form, so this is our final simplified answer, two thirds. Let's move on to number two, where we have five halves times 11 sixths. Let's multiply straight across, starting with the numerators. Five times 11 is 55. Now for the denominators, two times six is 12. So we end up with 55 twelfths, which is an improper fraction. So let's convert this to a mixed number for our final answer. We do that by dividing. So we divide the numerator, 55, by the denominator, 12. So 55 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 55? Well, four, that gets us to 48. We don't hit 55 exactly. We have a remainder of seven, and then we keep the denominator of 12 the same. We end up with four and seven twelfths. We can look to see if we can simplify that fractional part of the mixed number. Seven twelfths is in simplest form. The only common factor between seven and 12 is one. So our final answer, four and seven twelfths. Now I do wanna review real quick how we went from that improper fraction to a mixed number by writing out all of the steps. So we divided the numerator, 55, by 12. So 55 divided by 12. How many whole groups of 12 in 55? Four. So that's the whole number part of our mixed number. 4 times 12 is 48. 55 minus 48 gives us a remainder of 7. That goes right here. Then we keep the denominator of 12 the same. So we end up with 4 and 7 twelfths. There's how to multiply improper fractions. Let's move on to multiplying improper fractions and whole numbers. Now we will take a look at how to multiply improper fractions and whole numbers. Let's jump into our examples, starting with number one, where we have six times five halves. Now we need to multiply straight across and simplify if possible. Since we need to multiply straight across, we need to rewrite the whole number in fractional form. That way we have a numerator and denominator and we can multiply straight across. So let's rewrite that whole number six in fractional form. And we do that by putting it over one. We can rewrite any whole number in fractional form by putting it over one. We're not changing the value of that six. That fraction, six over one, still has a value of six times five halves. Now we can multiply straight across. Since we rewrote that whole number in fractional form, we have a numerator and a denominator. Let's start with the numerators. So six times five is 30. Now for the denominators, one times two is two. So we end up with 30 halves, 30 over two. But this is an improper fraction. So let's convert this to a mixed number. We do that by dividing the numerator by the denominator. So we have 30 divided by two. How many whole groups of two in 30? 
Well, 15. And we hit 30 exactly. We do not have a remainder. So this actually works out to be a whole number, not a mixed number. Again, because we don't have a remainder there. So six times five halves equals 15. Let's move on to number two, where we have nine sevenths times three. So let's rewrite this with the whole number in fractional form. That way we have a numerator and a denominator and we can multiply straight across. Let's start with the numerators. Nine times three is 27. Now for the denominators, seven times one is seven. So we end up with 27 sevenths, which is an improper fraction. So let's convert this to a mixed number. We divide the numerator by the denominator in order to do that. So 27 divided by seven, how many whole groups of seven in 27? Well, three whole groups, that gets us to 21. So we have a remainder of six. That's the numerator of our fractional part here. And then we keep the denominator of seven the same. We can always look to simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. Six sevenths is in simplest form. The only common factor between six and seven is one. So we are done. Three and six sevenths. Now, just for a quick recap, as far as how we went from that improper fraction, 27 sevenths to the mixed number three and six sevenths, I'll work this out by hand. So we did 27 divided by seven. How many whole groups of seven in 27? Well, three whole groups. That's the whole number part of the mixed number. Three times seven is 21. Subtract 27 minus 21 is six. So we get a remainder of six. That remainder is the numerator of the fractional part. And then we keep the denominator of seven the same. So there you have it. There's a complete guide to multiplying fractions. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.